Hello, my name is Adam. I'm 23 years old and on the 15th of July 2015, just after my 21st birthday, I was diagnosed with relapsing remissive multiple sclerosis. My first symptom occurred when I was working abroad um, about a year beforehand. I had a strange feeling all down my right forearm, which felt very much like an open graze, but with no physical symptoms, no redness, no swelling, no aggravation of the skin, just this open grazed symptom. Um, it remained for a few weeks and then it disappeared. And on its departure came a new symptom, a numb sort of tingling that is very difficult to describe. Uh, it was down my right thumb and it lasted for a little while before spreading into my right index finger and into my right middle finger. Um, I dismissed it as just being a trap nerve or something up in my shoulder. Um, and it lasted for a little while until I did a big drive up north with my family. Um, we stayed at a hotel, had a lovely dinner. It was very chilled out, very relaxed and nothing sort of untoward was going on until I got into the bath. Um, my left leg, I could feel the heat through. And my right leg, I couldn't feel anything through. No, none of the heat, none of the water. It was very sort of dulled. Uh, when I got out of the bath, I then put my right foot down on the uh, on the bathroom floor, and I couldn't feel anything through the bottom of my foot. Um, and my whole leg was sort of buzzing, as if um, with that sort of pins and needles sensation. I saw an out of hours GP, and they told me that I should see a neurologist when I get home. So after uh, coming home. Uh, seeing my doctor, there were lots and lots of blood tests, uh, reflex tests, uh, EVIP tests to test the conductivity of my nerves. Um, I had a lumbar puncture and an MRI scan, and eventually they found two lesions in my brain and one lesion uh, that was slightly larger in my spine. Um, I had my official diagnosis of multiple sclerosis fairly shortly after that. Um, during that time, especially with my hand, um, I had to relearn how to type properly, how to hold a pen properly, how to hold smaller objects because I wouldn't be able to feel them in my hand so I would drop them all the time. Um, now though, my personal day-to-day -day living is good. I do everything that a regular person is able to do. I can drive, I can socialise, I can go for really long walks, I can go to work full time and I'm shortly going to be starting university, a uh, three years course in nursing and I'm confident that I will be able to do it. Um, however, like a portion, well like a large portion of MS patients, my biggest issue is fatigue. Fatigue is very different to tiredness, regular tiredness. It affects my cognitive ability I can slur my speech, I can mix up the order I intend to get words out. Um, I often withdraw from larger social groups because I can't follow the conversation in a larger group of people in the same way that I can when I'm more awake. Um, I can't always follow dates and times and put things in chronological order. My memory is not always brilliant for remembering things like dates and times um, and where I'm supposed to be. So you, you find coping mechanisms such as uh, writing things down a lot and making sure that you have everything laid out in front of you for, for the week or for the month or for the year so that you, you are where you need to be. Um, my old relapses do come back um, almost like aftershocks of old symptoms. Um, so my hands in particular sometimes can become fuzzy, uh, dull sort of sensation, almost like I'm wearing a pair of gloves. Um, it's much less severe than the original relapse um, and it gradually disappears on its own. Uh, but in June this year, I would have had what I would describe as a big relapse. Um, it was suspected to be in the lumbar region, sort of down in the base of my spinal cord. Um, and it affected the leg muscles on my right leg um, from the hip down to about my knee and it rendered me again unable to walk properly much worse than it was the first time back in 2015 um, because of this the MS team at pool have decided that it's time for my to start treatment um, to start injections every week three times a week um, of capaxone which is glitterama acetate and what that does is it reduces by about 36 percent the chance of me having a relapse but it doesn't eliminate it altogether um, there is of course a huge mental and emotional impact from ms 
the most frightening part of it is the unpredictability of the condition. My consultant describes it as an unpredictable beast. Um, I don't know if I'm going to wake up tomorrow and still have the feeling in my one of my legs, for example. I don't know if I'm going to wake up really refreshed or if I'm going to wake up totally exhausted. Um, this morning, in particular, I woke up and couldn't really get out of bed because I was just so tired, even after eight hours sleep. Um, I don't know if my MS could become progressive, whether it will be a slow progression or a fast progression, or if indeed it will progress at all. I could go for the rest of my life with no relapses again. It's really, really unpredictable. Um, the most frequent comment that I get is, but you're so young. And it's true, I did not expect at the age of 20 um, that in a year's time I would be diagnosed with a lifelong condition. Uh, in, in less than a year's time, in fact, it was. Um, I didn't think I'd have to put in effort to managing my sleep, making sure that I get enough sleep in order to function properly the next day. I did not expect to be injecting myself three times a week in order to reduce the risk of my own immune system taking away my ability to walk properly, to move properly, to speak properly. Uh, it does cause a lot of mental stress um, and the key to solving it really is a positive mental attitude. It's living for the day, finding determination to live a good and healthy life. Um, whatever happens, you have to have the coping mechanisms in place to do the things you want to do. There's also a really big importance in discussing your mental health with family, friends, healthcare practitioners, because after my relapse in June, I'll fully admit that I struggled to cope with the situation that I was in. Um, the most important fact, though, about multiple sclerosis is that not one of us is the same. We all present different symptoms. We all have different severities and frequencies of symptoms. And I would consider myself very lucky to be very physically able and have an excellent quality of life as it stands at the moment. And that is the big thing, it's at the moment. Nobody knows what their future holds with MS. Um, everybody is very different. You have to um, accept the fact that everybody presents their symptoms in different ways. Nobody has had the same experience. We may have similar experiences, um, but never the same. There's no particular way to have MS. Um, hopefully that's a little bit enlightening on the condition. It shows how somebody lives with it day to day and, and the sorts of things that we all have to deal with. Um, it's important to realise as well that it's very much an invisible condition in a lot of cases. Most people who have MS, you wouldn't really know that they had it. Um, it's only in the more severe cases, the more debilitating sort of instances of the condition that you start to realise that somebody has it.